The MC Clubhouse in GTA on 5 is kind of a bit old school and often gets forgotten as a source of reliable and relatively easy money in GTA Online. With the changes from the Expanded and Enhanced, the Criminal Enterprises DLC and now the San Andreas Mercenary DLC, it's experienced a bit of a resurgence of late. So it's time to dive back in with the new and improved Ultimate Guide to the Motorcycle Businesses in GTA Online. Hi, my name's Dan, and I'm an old grumpy gamer. So, why do you need a clubhouse? Well, it's your gateway to running a motorcycle club. The clubhouse is where you'll manage your illicit activities, plan your contracts, and even enjoy a cold brew. It's not just a home base, it's a command center for your burgeoning criminal enterprise. This is one of our most comprehensive guides yet, and we'll be going through purchasing and renovating your clubhouse, making money with the bar and the custom shop, the contracts mechanic introduced in the criminal enterprises DLC, profitability and return on investment for every every MC business, how this all ties in with the nightclub, how to set up and run your MC businesses, and avoiding business raids. To get a clubhouse, you want to surf on over to the Maze Bank Foreclosures site on the in-game web. Filter for clubhouses and you'll see a selection popping up. They range in price, but you don't have to go bankrupt. The cheapest, the Grand Chappelle Clubhouse, is around 200 grand. It's in a decent location, but if you've got the cash, you might want to find one in the city centre. Next up, the upgrades. Most are cosmetic, they're just there to spice up the look of your clubhouse, but there are a couple worth considering. The gun locker helps helps us declutter your weapon wheel. Not vital, but useful. The real deal though is the custom bike shop. With the 2022 business changes, this isn't just for bike mods anymore. Now you'll get a chance to rake in some serious cash and more on that in a bit. Oh, and did I mention the clubhouse has a bar? And that's not just for decal. As the owner, you can kick off a resupply mission and keep the booze flowing every few hours and you'll find a nice tidy cash bonus waiting for you in the office. To keep this rolling, all you have to do is approach the bar in your clubhouse. Look for the controls top left. Cindy will give you a fetch quest, head outside, jump in a vehicle and follow the GPS to wherever it goes. Take care of any resistance, then get the heck out of Dodge. You'll be pursued by up to three separate groups of bikers, each with four members, so 12 in total. You can either bail out and take care of them, or you can just try and outdrive them. I tend to go for the latter. Once the job's done, you'll get a quick 10 grand and the bar will continue making passive income for a couple of hours. After a while, head back to the clubhouse and you'll see a bag of cash in the office. Now, back to that bike shop, which works more or less the same as the auto shop if you've got one of those. Roughly once an hour, a customer rolls in with a bike. You can customize it to their liking, which is dirt cheap, then deliver it. Now, if you keep it in pristine condition, no scratches, no dents, you'll net a clean 50 grand and they'll cover the cost of the upgrades too, so it is pure profit. Again, following along with the auto shop are the new contracts. Head to your clubhouse whiteboard and you'll see a list of contracts. They take typically between 10 and 20 minutes with some requiring a sidekick although most of the ones I've played have been a solo affair. There's quite a number of contracts available so I won't go through them in detail here but they are similar to the mini finales of the auto shop contracts and pay between 12,500 and 60 grand per mission but most pay around the 25 grand mark so not super lucrative but a nice distraction nonetheless. For solo players, I'd suggest sticking with the contracts Life and Death Bikes, Buy the Pound, Gun Running, Hit the Roof, and Torched. And you want to avoid Jailbreak. And thanks to the in team for putting that list together, there's a link to their original video with the best clubhouse contracts below. But let's be honest, you're not getting a clubhouse so you can make chump change on side quests. This is really about the biker businesses, isn't it? This is where the real cash is at. So there are five distinct businesses you can start once you have a clubhouse. There's some extra stuff for the nightclub too, and we'll get into that later, but five core biker businesses. In order of most profitable to least profitable, and using YouTube safe terms, we have a lockup that produces white powder, a laboratory that produces blue crystal, a paper factory and laundry, a farm producing some wacky green 
between stuff and a travel document office. Now, while each of these businesses has their own unique quirks and products, they all operate more or less the same. You purchase and upgrade the building, run a quick setup mission to get things rolling, purchase or otherwise acquire supplies, supplies are converted to product over time, sell the resulting product, and rinse and repeat. So what we'll do in this guide is go through each of the business's costs and income, showing profitability and return on investment. Then we'll go through the day-to-day, -day, bearing in mind every business works the same, and it's only dollar figures that change. Oh, and the other thing you need to budget for is upgrades. Each facility needs to have staff and equipment upgrades added. Without those upgrades, you will not make any money on these, and it becomes a whole mess of not worth it. Each business has an optional security upgrade too. This reduces the frequency your businesses are raided by the cops. Not absolutely necessary, but being raided destroys any product you have ready and means that you have to redo the setup missions, which is an epic pain. So I've spent the extra money for security and highly recommend you do the same as well. Firstly, we've got the powder lockup, with the Alamo C being the cheapest at 975,000 or 2,870,000 with the upgrades. Looking at a single resupply, which will set you back 75,000, or you can do a mission if you're short, but a single resupply will gross you a tidy $220,160 and take about two hours to complete. If you want to fill the lockup to capacity, it will take two and a half resupplies and bring in 504,000 per run. Assuming you've purchased your supplies, that works out to a net profit of about 72.5 per hour, giving you a break even of 39 and a half hours. Then comes the blue crystals. The Grand Sonora Desert unit will set you back 910,000 or 2,854,500 with the upgrades. One full restock of this baby will net you 178,500 and take about two and a half hours to produce. If you want to fill the lab to capacity, it will take two and a bit resupplies and bring in 428.4 per run. Assuming you've purchased your supplies, that works out to a net profit of about 41.4 per hour, meaning you'll take around 69 hours to make your money back. Nice. Next on the list, we've got the paper factory and laundry. The Grand Sonora Desert unit will set you back 845 grand even, or 2,454 with all the upgrades. One full restock of this fella will net you 176.4 and take about 2 hours and 40 minutes to produce. If you want to fill the laundry to capacity, it will take 2 resupplies and bring in 352.8 per run. Assuming you've purchased your supplies, that works out to a net profit of about 37.5 per hour, with a slightly less abhorrent 66 hours to break even. Ah, the wacky green stuff. The San Chiansky Mountain Range Unit will set you back 700 and 15 thou or 2,291,500 with the upgrades. One resupply of this bad boy will net you 189 grand and take around three hours and 20 minutes to produce. If you want to fill the farm to capacity, it will take one and two third resupplies and bring it 302.4 per run. Assuming you've purchased your supplies, that works out to a net profit of around 34,500 per hour. And that means we're looking at about 66 hours or so to recover your capex. The last is the um, travel document business. The grape seed facility is your entry point here at 650 thou or 1,680 with the upgrades. That'll fetch you 126,000 on a single resupply and take about two hours and 30 minutes to convert. If you want to fill the office to capacity, it will take one and a bit resupplies and bring you 151.2 per run. Again, assuming you have purchased your supplies, that works out to a net profit of about 20,000 $400 per hour. So you're looking at a break even of a touch over 82 hours. Now, while we're on profitability and before we move on to actually running your biker business, there's one additional thing to consider, your nightclub. If you own a nightclub and you've upgraded the warehouse in the basement, you may have noticed a whole bunch of products your staff can source there. The nightclub warehouse goods are tied to other businesses in the game. And in this case, owning the powder lockup unlocks the South American ports, the Blue Crystal Lab 
unlocks pharmaceutical research. Paper Factory and Laundry unlocks the cash creation option. The Wacky Green Stuff unlocks the organic produce. The Travel Document Office unlocks the printing and copying option, which can make the less profitable options available to you as an MC Clubhouse owner suddenly become worth the effort. Oh, and in case you're wondering, owning a special cargo warehouse or a hangar unlocks the cargo and shipments, and owning a bunker unlocks the sporting goods. Anyway, enough of that tangent, back to the MC business. So every biker business runs in precisely the same way, which is great because once you've learned one, you know all of them. However, it does mean some of the missions can get a little tedious. How do they work? Well, you purchase and upgrade the building, run a quick setup mission to get things rolling, purchase or otherwise acquire supplies. Supplies are then converted to product over time. You sell the resulting product and rinse and repeat. To purchase your business, head to your MC Clubhouse. Find the office, which is normally tucked away in a corner somewhere. Look for an icon of a laptop on your minimap. Sit down at the computer, log in, buy business, and you'll be presented with a list of businesses. And there's a filter on the left if it's a bit cluttered. Select the one you're after. Remembering the cheapest option is absolutely okay, but if you can get one to the north of the city, that's even better. Click the business you've decided on, then buy now and any other confirmations. Head out of the building, set a marker and head over. The first time you walk into the business, you'll get a quick one-time silent briefing. Remember the MC businesses were set up before Rockstar did elaborate storylines for their DLCs. So pay attention here, it's important. After the briefing, head to the laptop. There's an icon to show you where that's at. Controls are top left, log in, then click setup, top left. Confirm, and you'll be immediately booted from the facility and LJT will give you a bell. After Lester's finished banging on, there will be a new marker in the map for what is typically a pretty basic fetch quest. Head over, find the supplies and collect them, head back. And another quick silent briefing, so pay attention. And that's it. Next up, upgrades. Head back to the laptop, log in, upgrades, pick the first one, confirm, get booted from the PC while the business is being upgraded, take a quick look around at the upgrades if you're keen, then rinse and repeat for the other two. Okay, with that done, you now have a full set of supplies and staff incoming. Time to walk away for a while, and how long you walk away for depends on the business. Again, a single round of supplies for the powder lockup takes two hours to produce and will gross you a tidy 220 grand. Blue crystals takes two and a half hours to produce and will net you 178.5. The paper factory and laundry takes two hours and 40 minutes to produce and will bring in 176.4. The wacky green stuff takes three hours and 20 minutes to produce, which will net you 189 grand. And the travel documents will take around two and a half hours to convert and will fetch you 126 grand. But what happens when you run out of supplies? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, if you're not on it pretty quickly, LJT will give you a bell and let you know so you can relax there. But ultimately, you'll need to resupply the business. And we have two options, three if you include the stash houses, but two really. The easy and most efficient way, especially if you have multiple businesses, is to simply purchase supplies. This will cost 75,000, but will save you about 40 minutes to an hour. If you're running multiple businesses or you own an agency or a Kasatka, the money you make in that 40 minutes far outweighs the out-of-pocket expense. To purchase these supplies, either head to the business itself and log into the laptop or to the arcade and the master control center if you own one. Once you've logged in, click resupply, buy supplies and any confirmations. Now, a couple of quick notes here. If you resupply early, that is before the supplies have run out, the supplies may be a bit cheaper. So you don't need to wait until the business is completely empty to resupply. Option two for supplies is to steal them. Now there is a massive issue with doing this. Sure, it saves you a bit of coin, but stealing supplies only nets you 20% of what purchasing them does. So that means you need to do five individual supply runs for a full resupply of your business. Each run takes between eight and 12 minutes. So that's 40 minutes to an hour of grinding. Unless you are literally flat broke, you are way better off purchasing supplies. Anyway, if you're super keen to persist down this road, same as before, head to the business itself and log into the laptop or to the arcade and the master control center. Resupply, steal supplies, booted, quick call from Lester, uh, I'm sorry, I mean Long John D-Bag, and a new marker will appear. Now there's about a dozen different resupply missions. Some will need 
need you to literally steal supplies from rivals, others will need you to liberate some stuff from lockups, and some will require you to intercept a delivery drop. Regardless, they're pretty straightforward. Just make sure you have full weapons, armor, and ammo before going in so you're not caught on the hop, and you can stop at ammunition on your way to the drop if you're a little under-equipped. Also, if you're brave enough to do these in a public lobby, other players will be incentivized to steal or destroy your supplies. So I recommend doing this in an invite-only lobby instead, unless you're looking to get properly griefed. One other option that's recently been added is the stash houses. These are great because they're a super quick and easy way to resupply, but they can be a bit hit and miss because you only get one opportunity per real world day and the resupply itself is random. But anyway, if you head down this route, head to anywhere in the open, open your map, look for a little purple house, set a marker and head over. Down the stairs and take out the five guards and there are always five guards. Find the yellow post-it and note the safe combo over to the safe and unlock them. Then back up the stairs and get the heck out of dodge. Once you clear one of your businesses, we'll get a full resupply. That's the full 75 gram worth, but you won't know which one until it's randomly selected at the end of the mission. You'll also get 30 grand in your back pocket, which is a nice little bonus. So if you're going to do this, I'd suggest maybe doing it at the start of a long session so you can skip at least one resupply and then get on to the rest of your business. Okay, it's been a minute, you've racked up some product and you're ready to sell. Oh, and while we're on sell missions, some YouTubers will use the term sell your business regularly and that confused the crap out of me. You don't actually sell your business, what they mean is you sell your stock inside your business or your warehouse, you still keep the building. Anyway, head to the business and over to the laptop and you always want to do this from the business rather than from the master control center starting these from the arcade can cost you valuable time so from the business itself now before we get started on the missions themselves when you walk in you'll see a product bar and that is a good indicator of how many vehicles you're going to get if your product bar is less than one third full you'll get a single vehicle probably five stops but a single vehicle which makes a delivery quick easy and solo friendly between one third and two third full means two vehicles Doable solo in an invite only lobby, but you're going to want a fast way to get back between drop offs. Either a really quick bike or a helicopter. This one is much easier with a friend. Once you clock over two thirds full, it becomes a three vehicle mission with likely 15 stops. I've done this a couple of times solo, but it's a massive pain in the backside and you may well run out of time before your deliveries are finished. So if you're looking at more than a two third full product bar, you're going to need at least one mate to help you out two if possible so head back to the business premises and wander over to the pc log in and click sell stock you'll then be presented with two sell options a quicker cheaper mission or a longer mission that will get you a better price and we always want to go for that higher amount click the higher amount click the confirm button next and you'll be booted back into the public lobby and after a moment you'll get another call from ljt lester will brief you on one of a half a dozen different sell missions Simply follow the instructions to drop off the goods, avoiding any griefers, and you're good. Most of the missions are reasonable, but the post-op van is mind-numbingly slow and boring. As soon as that last package is dropped, the money will be deposited in your account, and you can continue putting around in free mode. Now, if you're silly, I mean brave, brave enough to do this in a public lobby, which will net you a 2% high-demand sell bonus for every player in the lobby, although I believe that's now capped at 18 players or 36% as of the Mercs DLC. But anyway, if you do this in a public lobby, players will be incentivized to destroy your shipment. If that happens, the moment your shipment is destroyed, change lobbies or exit the game. If you're quick enough, the game won't register your product as being destroyed. When you either boot back up or land in the next lobby, most of your product will still be intact. I think you might lose one package this way, but most of it will still be intact. If you get the post-op mission, you can also do this trick to try and get something a little less tedious at the cost of a little bit of stock, so probably worth it. Right, one last thing to touch on with the MC businesses is raids. Every four active hours or so, there's a chance the cops will raid one of your businesses. If they do, the cops will destroy any product that you have in the business, destroy any supplies that you have, 
and arrest all of your staff. You'll get an on-screen notification when the raid starts. If it's left unchecked or unchallenged, like say if you're AFK, this means the business will lose everything and you'll need to do another setup mission to get rolling again. If you catch it early, that is while the cops are still at the business premises, you can head over and kill all of the raiders and your business will remain completely intact. This is absolutely the ideal scenario. Miss the notification or take your time with it and the cops will make off with your staff and product, in which case you'll need to chase them down and liberate whatever they have, then return to the business with whatever you can. Now, from what I've been able to ascertain, the raids themselves will only happen if you've been in the game for at least a few hours, and you're registered as some kind of boss, and you're in the open world, and you're not participating in an open world mission. Raids have never happened to me when I'm in an unrelated building, like my arcade or executive office, and I've never had one while doing a prep mission for Kyo, Dre, or anything like that. Raids will never happen if you're in a contact mission or race either. So I've found the way to minimize the impact is to take a break, like literally shut the game down and take a break every few hours, which honestly is probably a good idea anyway. Limit boss time. So only stay registered as an MC club president for the absolute minimum time, like when you're checking on progress of production, supplies, etc. Retire the moment a cell mission or supply mission is complete too. Be mindful of your location. If if you're on a longer session, only register as a club president when you're physically in one of your businesses and retire before leaving it if you can. And limit AFK. Only AFK for a few hours at a time. If you want to AFK for a long time, you may need to shut down the game after a few hours, then reboot it to reset the timer. None of these are guaranteed, of course, but I found them helpful in minimizing raids and therefore stock loss and wasted time. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.